ends. And we're uh, sort of introducing this idea of the endocrine system on a whole. We're gonna talk about each of the different types of glands here. Um, so endocrine glands on a whole are derived from epithelial tissue. So they're very similar to any of our other glands. They're lined by uh, epithelial lining made of epithelial cells. Um, their main function is really to help with signaling and control of certain hormonal functions. Um, we have primary and secondary endocrine organs. Primary endocrine organs, this is their main function, endocrine signaling, right? So hormone secretion, uh, hormone signaling is their main, and I kind of want to say uh, only function. Um, secondary endocrine glands, their main function is not involving the endocrine system. It's something else, but they do also play a role. They do secrete hormones that have a function within the endocrine system. And so we can think of them as being, or having a secondary function involving the endocrine system, okay? And we'll talk about some examples as we go on here. So primary endocrine glands are the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. These are the master endocrine glands. We'll talk a lot about this access where they communicate um, later on, but these are the main chief endocrine glands, if you will. We've also got the pineal gland, so a gland within the brain, also important in endocrine function and hormone secretion. We've got the thyroid glands and the parathyroids, so the thyroids and parathyroids are in close, closely associated. The parathyroids are embedded in the thyroid gland. Although they secrete different hormones, they are one connected, connected structure um, and their main role is in hormone secretion. We've also got the thymus gland, also important in the, the immune system as well, but mainly involved in the endocrine system. Um, we've got the adrenal glands. These are above the kidney. So we talked about them as it pertained to uh, the adrenal chromaffin cells and the autonomic nervous system. But the adrenal glands are primarily an endocrine gland as well. And then lastly here, the pancreas. The pancreas is actually a shared gland. It has endocrine and exocrine parts. Um, and just to kind of briefly or loosely describe endocrine versus exocrine, endocrine is any time a gland releases its, co its contents into the blood. And we talked about this release of contents into the blood as being a hormone. So endocrine glands release hormones. Exocrine is where we release something uh, other than using the blood. So we release it into a duct. And this is how the GI system receives the pancreatic secretions that have the enzymes that help to break down the food that we eat. And so those are not released into the blood, they're released into ducts. And so we call that an exocrine uh, function. So the pancreas actually has a dual function, both endocrine where it releases substances into the blood, as well as exocrine where it releases substances into ducts, okay? And then lastly here, the gonads, so essentially the ovaries in females and then the testes in males also play a major endocrine role as well. Um, and then contrasting that to secondary endocrine organs or secondary endocrine glands, these are organs or glands that have an entirely different function. So the heart is not mainly involved in endocrine signaling. It's actually involved in the circulatory system, but it also secretes a hormone. And so it has a secondary endocrine function. It secretes atrial natriuretic peptide or ANP, which is a peptide or hormone that helps us balance sodium and, and water uh, regulation. Um, we've also got the kidneys. The kidneys are mainly involved in um, waste production and filtering the blood, but they also secrete erythropoietin. And erythropoietin is involved in stimulating new red blood cell production, new erythrocyte production from the bone marrow. Um, the GI tract has several hormones that are released, CCK or cholecystokinin, cicretin, gastrin. Again, the GI system is mainly involved in digestion and absorption, but it does release these hormones, and so it has a secondary uh, endocrine function. Other examples here, the liver we know is involved as a gland, a main exocrine gland as well. It's going to help with uh, the, the, the breakdown of our digestive uh, products, um, but it also secretes IGF, insulin-like growth factors or somatomedins. So let's talk about how those function in the endocrine system coming up. And then the skin, main functioning in terms of that barrier protection, the immune system, but then also playing a role in vitamin D production. So it's going to help activate 
the inactive form of vitamin D to the activated form. Um, and then fat, right, we know is mainly for energy production, but then that also secretes, um, not energy production, energy storage, excuse me, but then that also secretes leptin, which is one of our hunger hormones, okay? All right, so that was kind of just in introducing the glands, talking about them, whether they're primary or secondary. Now we're gonna get into speaking about the links between the hypothalamus and the anterior and posterior pituitary lobes. So again, really getting into the control center of the endocrine system via this hypothalamo-pituitary axis. So let's first start by looking at the three structures involved here. So we have the hypothalamus located in the brain. This region here is called the hypothalamus. Okay, this region below the thalamus. So if you remember from our brain unit in the anatomy lab, this central portion is the thalamus and this portion just beneath the thalamus is called the hypothalamus, okay? Um, we've also got the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is this gland that's kind of projecting downward. Um, and again, another thing we touched on in lab, this is the uh, gland that is housed in the pituitary fossa or the cella turcica. Um, and so it's gonna be this bulb-like projection that, that sticks downward from the brain, from the ventral part of the brain. Um, and that has two lobes. It's got an anterior lobe and a posterior lobe, and they have two completely different origins in terms of their makeup, but also two completely different functions, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, and lastly, there's the infundibulum. And the infundibulum is the stalk-like connection that bridges that gap between the hypothalamus and the pituitary. So it's really important to understand that while the hypothalamus is on top, sort of this triangular portion here, and the pituitary is on the bottom, this bulb-like uh, projection downward, they are being connected via or by the infundibulum. So the stalk that bridges that connection is called the infundibulum. And that connection is very important, which we'll talk about um, coming up. So the hormones that are secreted from the neurons of these endocrine glands is called the neurohormones, right? These are called neurohormones. They're not, they're not actually made by the gland itself. They're made by the neurons or the cell bodies that are in this part of the, 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 the hypothalamus. Um, and so while we speak about the hypothalamus as being a part of the endocrine system, it's not really a gland. It's not a gland as such. It doesn't have the epithelial lining. It's just, it just has these cell bodies, these cells that are originating in this region that are producing some of the neurohormones that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, and so these hormones are made in this region via these neurosecretory cells. These cells have their somas up here in the hypothalamus, but then they have their axons projecting all the way down to the posterior pituitary, okay? And so we're gonna start by looking at the posterior pituitary first and this connection here through the infundibulum. So the somas of these neurons are up in the hypothalamus. The axons project all the way through the infundibulum, all the way down to the posterior pituitary. And so there are two peptide hormones that are secreted here. They're made in the hypothalamus, but they're released from the posterior pituitary, okay? The first one is antidiuretic hormone or ADH, also called vasopressin. This is synthesized in the paraventricular nucleus, right? So specifically, this specific group of cells in the hypothalamus called the paraventricular nucleus. Whereas the oxytocin, is secreted from the superoptic nucleus. So a different cluster of cells called the superoptic nucleus is what secretes oxytocin. Now the function of ADH or vasopressin is going to be in terms of water balance and osmolarity. It's gonna help tell our kidneys to, uh, to conserve more water, right? To hold on to more water. That's why it has that, that term antidiuretic, antidiuresis, preventing the loss of water. Um, oxytocin, on the other hand, is going to be involved in milk ejection. And this is completely different from milk production. We're going to talk about another hormone, prolactin, later on, that is involved in milk production from the glands in the breast. But milk ejection is a function of oxytocin, which is coming from this posterior pituitary. All right. So we really want to underscore two important things here. The regions of the hypothalamus where these hormones are being um, made or secreted from the hypothalamus, from these cluster of cells called nuclei in the hypothalamus, the paraventricular, which makes ADH, the superoptic, which makes oxytocin, 
And then these hormones are gonna travel via their neurons. So these are neurohormones. So they're gonna be projected via these neurons and they're gonna be released from the axon endings, which are in the posterior pituitary. So it's a misnomer to think that the posterior pituitary makes hormones. It doesn't make any hormone. It only releases these hormones, which are actually made up in the hypothalamus, all right? Okay. So that was the posterior pituitary. Um, and the posterior pituitary, um, let's kind of go back here just for one quick second, is really a neuro, uh, it's really neurological in its origin. So it's not epithelial the way that the anterior pituitary is, like the way that all of our other glands are made of epithelial tissue. It's really made of neural tissue. So it can, it's going to differ completely in its makeup, its tissue makeup um, from the anterior pituitary. Um, and that's why there aren't that's why the hormones are not made here. They're just projected from these axons and released here. Okay. The anterior pituitary on the other end, so this anterior part of the pituitary here is epithelial in origin. So it's going to behave just like any other gland. Um, and it's going to release these hormones that help to regulate the secretion of other hormones. Now they can either stimulate those other hormones or they can inhibit those other hormones. It is also going to receive hormones from the hypothalamus, right? But in a different fashion than what we saw with the posterior pituitary. So a, an entirely different cluster of cells in the hypothalamus here are the neuro, neuro secretory uh, cluster of cells. Um, they are going to uh, basically make these hormones, um, trophic hormones that are gonna be released into the blood here via this uh, arterial supply then that blood is gonna flow down to the anterior pituitary, and then that is going to instruct or be released onto the anterior pituitary cells. And then they are going to do something different and they're going to release their hormones into the blood again, okay? This is what we call a portal system. And so to describe or define a portal system, this is anytime blood leaves one capillary bed and goes to another capillary bed before going back to the heart. So two capillary beds in series is called a portal system. And this is important here in the, in the endocrine glands because the hormones that are coming from the hypothalamus are gonna be dumped into the blood here. They're gonna enter the capillary bed here. They're gonna make their way not back to the heart, which is what is traditionally seen after we leave a capillary bed, but they're gonna to go to another capillary bed, which is down in the anterior pituitary. They're gonna then cross that capillary bed be released onto the epithelial cells of the anterior pituitary, and they're going to either stimulate or inhibit the epithelial cells of the anterior pituitary to either secrete other hormones or not secrete other hormones, okay? And then the epithelial cells of the anterior pituitary will then release their hormones depending on the instruction that is coming down from the hypothalamus. Um, and those hormones that are being released from the anterior pituitary will then go and instruct other glands, right? The thyroid gland, the adrenal gland, um, the pancreas, and so on. And so it's really this axis of communication. We could think about the hypothalamus as being the CEO. We can think about the anterior pituitary as being maybe the uh, executive director, executive manager, however that hierarchy goes. Um, and then we can think of the endocrine glands themselves as being the third chain in command, right? Just regular workers. Um, so there's that chain in command where instruction is coming from the hypothalamus via this portal circulation to the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary is going to make sense of those instructions. It's then going to send its own instructions down to the tertiary endocrine glands. Um, and then those endocrine glands are going to act accordingly based upon the instruction coming from the anterior pituitary, which is also coming from the hypothalamus indirectly. Okay. And that is what we mean by the hypothalamo pituitary axis, right? This axis of communication or uh, this hierarchy of communication from the hypothalamus the anterior pituitary to the tertiary endocrine glands. All right. So I kind of jumped ahead of myself here in explaining all of that on the previous slide, but we're going to kind of continue uh, describing that for a bit of repetition as we go here. So essentially, we've got blood entering the portal vein that has these initial trophic hormones. And trophic means it's going to 
give instruction or stimulate, right? Um, that's why we're calling these hormones trophic because they're going to tell the anterior pituitary to do something or not do something depending on which hormone specifically. So the hypothalamus is going to release these trophic hormones via this portal circulation. That is going to then flow down to the anterior pituitary. It's gonna enter the anterior pituitary um, via the secondary capillary bed, right? So we have two capillary beds here the, um, in, in series. And then from the anterior pituitary, uh, we're gonna give the instruction to those cells. And then the anterior pituitary cells are then going to release their hormones into the blood. So it's gonna go into the venous circulation here, travel throughout the rest of the blood, the rest of the vasculature and make their way, make its way to the distant endocrine glands. So again, we're thinking about the, uh, the, the, the thyroid here, parathyroids, the pancreas, all of those tertiary glands um, or distant glands um, that we've been speaking about um, that we introduced at the beginning.